Hello once again, Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. So, <laughs> here we have a part three on this AMT 1965 Ford Torino Cobra wheel alignment issue. Now, um, I have two of these model kits. They are both from AMT Ertl under RC2. So, I'm not 100% sure how this carries over into the newer kits going forward with round two. But I discovered something, actually quite a few things, that are very interesting about this model kit. So first off, this model kit was originally made as the 1968 Ford Torino. And you can see a picture of that right here. So one thing I was noticing as I did the research is that this kit, it was upgraded into being a Cobra. There is no such thing as a Ford Torino Cobra. It is either the Ford Torino or the Ford Cobra. And uh, what is, in, or the Talladega with the uh, different nose, of course, right? But did you know that Ford actually had four versions of this body style? The first was being the Ford Fairlane 500. Then the Torino, which I guess is more of an upgraded version of the uh, Ford Fairlane. And then the Cobra, which is blacked out in the grill and actually has like a uh, square chrome perimeter frame around the headlights. And the tail panel is different. So on the Fairlane, it's a standard tail panel. But on the Cobra, as we'll see, there is a mesh. Or sorry, on the Trino, there is a mesh. And the thing about this car is it, it has pieces from all four of these Fords just stuck on there. So these hood pins are for the Cobra only. The hood scoop, I think that was, you know, any car that had the 428 with Ram Air could get this hood scoop. And the back is where it really changes around. But the grill here is from the Fairlane 500 because the Fairlane 500 has two bars in between the headlights. The Torino has a single bar that goes across here with the letters GT in this corner down here. And then the Cobra is all blacked out and it's got the chrome frame around the headlights. And then of course the Talladega has got the drop, extended drop aerodynamic type of uh, front end. Anyway, so here's an interesting thing. So RC2 came out with this box that you see right here. And this one was from 2002. Later on, they brought out this one. Oh, I'm sorry. This is from 2006. Prior to that, they had this edition from 2002. So you'll notice it's got like the wavy line background and everything. This is sort of when RC2s took over from AMT Ertl itself. And you can hear, see here, www.rcertl.com. So this is the RC2, which is different from round two. And same as this, because, you know, it's both of these are RC2. So these are from kind of in that time period sort of thing. Now, what I want to show you is something I just discovered. So this is the 2002 version, and I haven't done anything with this yet. Um, you can still see I've got like the, the attachment from the mold and everything like that on there. Okay, and now I'm bringing this out of the box. This is the one from 2006. Now this is the one that I was cleaning up. This is the... Uh, one I'm going to be using for the NASCAR. Now, let me just move the box here. Okay. Now i got to zoom in a little bit. 
check this out. So I'm going to flip over this one. This is the uh, the one from the previous video where I remember I cut the pins off and I told everyone to slide this thing back just a little bit, right? Now check this out. Turning over the one from 2002, I still have the pins on here. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but where I cut it off, you can see two little white circles where the pins were. Now, if you see the very first video where I actually do cut off the pins, you'll notice that the pins were cone-shaped and pretty tall. But on this one, they're cylinder-shaped and they're short. And now, Pete, I do think you have this undercarriage here. Now, what I noticed is, uh, I'm gonna take this Sharpie here. I'm just gonna go around the circle, one of the circles anyway, where I cut the peg off. Okay, so now maybe you can see this when I bring it up to the camera. Now, if you notice, if I line up the two, I guess, what do you call it in the front? The splash apron, maybe? Notice where the pegs are. The one where I cut off... Okay, um, here, let's see if I can do this real quick. Yeah, I can do that. Okay, you see this indentation here that looks like the bottom of the radiator should fit in there? You know, I don't know if it does, but you'll notice something. So this indentation comes out along here, and pretty much the pin is practically, well, let's say 90% behind that slot. Here, they're pretty much in line with the slot, if not ahead of it. Actually, I'd say they're more ahead of it. So what does that mean? That actually means that the pins in here are ahead here. So if they're ahead in those uh, tower holes under the body, if these are ahead, that means that this is pushing this backward. And if these are... Actually, if these are... Okay, well, anyway. <laughs> ahead, behind, ahead, behind. These are ahead of the slot. So ahead of the slot is actually pushing the chassis backward a little bit, and behind the slot is bringing the chassis forward a little bit. So it depends on what year of this AMT kit that you have, because RC2 slid the pins forward. And you can even see in the indentation here, I can catch it in the light, you can see where the previous holes were and where these new ones are. Let me just... Uh, here, look at that for a minute. And I'm just going to take my glasses off here so I can see what the heck I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to go around here with the Sharpie where the hole has been covered over for the peg movement. Okay, bear with me. Listen to the background music. I'll put a track in here. Maybe something groovy, maybe some synth wave from the 80s. Okay. All right, you ready for this? There is where AMT themselves, RC2, remove that peg and put the pin there. Which makes sense for the pin that I cut off of the other one. So, aha! RC2 is to blame for this whole incident. So let's see how this actually fits to the body. Uh, let me grab the body here. Okay, if a body grabs a body, oh yeah! <laughs> Call HR and you'll go far in a court case. Okay, anyway, um, <laughs> enough of that. What was that? Okay, so there is where the original pins were. There and there. Okay. Okay, maybe I've got my geometry wrong a bit, but anyway, you can see that that is off register. And when we bring up 
the rear wheels. Okay, I'm slipping and sliding again. But remember that that, okay, that looks like about right from what I had before in the previous video. You can see that the hole is way ahead. And, uh, you know, some of you guys suggested, hang on, maybe I got this. Anyway, that axle hole is way ahead and there's no way you can get the wheels in. And some people suggested drilling a hole behind this hole. Okay, fine, fair enough. Cutting off the pegs, though, allows you to maneuver that into shape. Now, I will build the kit and see if it actually does hop the interior out. So, that's coming up in the future. If it does, well, then it does. If it doesn't, then we have a solution to this one with the messed up pegs. Okay, so now it's going to be tricky because this is still on. But if I take the modified from RC2 modified chassis, maybe I can go to Jerry rig this thing in. So bear with me. Okay, so here it goes into those new pins. Actually, they're kind of more like cylinders. So the cylinders here are going in the hole. Now look at this. Look at the location of that rear axle. It's dead center into the rear hole. The front is still just back a bit, but this time it's like a 32nd of an inch instead of how out of whack it was in the previous video. Of, well, the first video of the other one. Well, really. doesn't look too out of whack but I think you can see that that's forward right so look at the block there it's forward yeah of course it would be forward because in the back it's forward so those previous pins were forcing the front end to go forward by cutting them off you can move it back in and center it into like I said before that a you know frame up there for your shock towers but in here It now does have it, but it's still kind of not, hmm. There's a flash around there. No, it does look to me like it's in the A. Well, at least a lot better than it was on the other one. So there, it's centered. So there you have your perfect wheel alignment. So it all depends on which version of this undercarriage that you have from... Actually, I think it's bizarre. This one's 2006, this one's 2002. So what did AMT do here? They filled the original holes and cleared them off and put these pegs in. Then what did they do here? Get rid of the pegs and move the holes back to the hole? To the incorrect hole? That's really odd, but I mean, hey, RC2, <laughs> RC2 didn't care about actually making models for people. They cared about putting out die casts. And there's a lot of stories about weird things with RC2 kits that don't exist in any other AMT kits, either before that or <laughs> uh, after that, really. So RC2 really did a lot to, you know, basically mess up AMT. And one thing is RC2, they don't really have any decals. Like the new decals for this kit, I've been looking up the most recent release from RC2. And they actually have that stripe that's supposed to come across. Let's see. It goes like this on the quarters. Or, or is it the other way around? But anyway, there's a stripe that runs along the car. And then it comes under. I think that's it. Yeah, it runs along the top of the car, rolls under, and comes down here. Those decals are not in this thing at all. We get that funny 80s three-color stripe. Let me see if I can find it quick. Since I have your attention here. <laughs> yeah, here it is. See, this is what we got in the round two kit. This. The only thing, and it's not even colored right, the Cobra Jet Ram Air. I th 
you know, that's the air cleaner decal. And I do believe there are some colors in there, like an orange and stuff. But yeah, we got this. And this is definitely out of the 80s. Could even be a reprint of the 80s license plate. Got a Texas 170 DEV. Uh, this is supposed to... It's supposed to go right there. Like that. And then this little piece here goes on the front of the fender. But basically, that's what you got. And uh, yeah, so... That is it, my friends. We actually have two under chassis with two different front locating pinholes that go into these holes here. And that's just crazy. Oh, and I was watching some other people making builds of this kit. And I was looking at real photos of the car. And AMT actually does have the detail on the top of these shock towers pretty darn accurate. You've got a cone that's mounted in three points right here, and that is just how AMT has molded it. Now, some of you are saying, oh yeah, the radiator is garbage, right? It isn't. Ford actually had a small radiator like this. Now, uh, as a thought, there is a battery that glues over top of this post, so that covers it from when you're looking at the top down. And then on this side, if you want, get a piece of evergreen styrene, and just make a, like a flat panel for the hood latch to hook into. And you'll cover over those two parts of that post. And that just leaves you with this one. And you, well, I was going to say you could use it as a charcoal tank. But, or charcoal canister, I mean. But it's actually halfway through the firewall, so I don't think that would uh, quite work. If it was actually sticking out like a cylinder, then it, you'd be right on. And Pete was saying that this mold is dragged down too far for that Ford uh, windshield washer bottle. And he's correct. It should actually terminate right about there. So you'd have to chisel that out and then put a flat piece of styrene underneath if you want accuracy. But the shock towers are in the right spot, Pete, so... That is okay. You wouldn't have to move those back or anything. And what's interesting is when the bodies are painted, this portion right across here is, and up is body color, and down below it's all satin black. So it's like it's, you know, down in a cage or something. So that was interesting. And then I noticed something else for you guys wanting to build this as an ass car like I do. Here, I've discovered where the line is for digging out and putting those big fat monster slicks up under here. This is for cutting your wheel arch open and it looks huge. <laughs> I will admit that. And there is another one in the front fender, but I couldn't, couldn't get the Sharpie down in here because it's um, really tight in there. Actually, you know what? Let's attempt it. I don't know. It, this line is so faint, though. It's very hard to see it. I will uh, show you the non-sharpie side. Actually, I can't get my light in here at all. Oh, wait. Wait a minute. There's part of it. Do, 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 listen to the music. Oh, oh. oh, I can't get the tip of the sharpie in here. Where are you? Am I actually getting you right? Come on, Sharpie, get there. Ooh, this is very hard to see. This line is terrible, by the way. <laughs> okay. All right, so here... See what I mean? It's like really hard to get up in there, but you can see where that line is now. And just so you can tell on the other side, in the rear wheel arch, that line is right in there. It is so faint that, you know, if you blink, you miss it. And you can kind of see it there. 
So what you do in this situation is you could use your hobby knife or you could use a Dremel, but basically you're going and carving and carving, actually let's go over here, and carving this out till you get that whole thing out of there. Now, like I say, this looks very high, so I'm not exactly sure when you get this together, like how much blank space is gonna be around that tire. But, uh, let's, can I do this? Can you see the line that's uh, transmitting through the, the body? Maybe you can see it there. But yeah, that's where it would be cut out for the wheel arch. Ah, here. <laughs> this light doesn't want to cooperate. Okay, let me see if I can get it. Okay, trace it with my red pointy stick. It's going right up there and out there. And I wonder if that would cut above. Oh, there isn't even. It's an open top wheel arch. So I just wonder how high up that thing would be. Oh, okay. We're, uh, let's get the interior in here. Interior! <laughs> Send a message to the interior. <laughs> okay, come on, drop. Okay, this is the one from the other kit, but it doesn't matter. I also notice that this arm is shorter than that arm for a left and right, but that makes no sense because you, could, you can't glue this upside down, right? Anyway, okay, so got that in. Got the undercarriage in, and it should be about there. Yeah, if you cut that where it shows, you're gonna actually see a bit, pardon me, a bit of this bump in here, and probably what is not in here, you know what I mean, through the side. So you're gonna have to play that arch by ear I am definitely thinking that you're going to be cutting back quite a bit from where that actual arch is. I don't think anyone's going to go like right up in there like that. I mean, the only way you could get away with that is if you took this hole. Maybe you have to do that, I don't know, and go up straight up this way and drill it so that this whole thing is like lowered. So that when it does, when the tire does get to the top of this arch, which is right up into here, yeah, that's something wrong there. But at any rate, uh, they do give you some kind of arch thing, so you could follow this to some degree just to get those gigantic tires in the back. So here we are, 22 minutes later, and I think that's pretty much all I can tell you. It basically boils down to. There are two chassis. The one that fits has the pins forward. Um, if you have one that doesn't fit, chop the pins off and shift this back. And clear out any debris that's down in here so that it doesn't hook onto here and push this back. But remember, you're gonna build your interior first and glue all this in. Then as the last hurrah, you're going to drop this into place, and that should prevent anything from shifting in your interior bucket. Sliding back, getting out of the way of the, the curvature of the front glass and the dashboard. Oh, there are there is one other little bit here, but I'll cover this when I start building it. AMT also doesn't have that line there that drops down from the door panel. Hang on, where's, what's happening with my light? <laughs> Yeah, I moved it. That's what happened. Here's the untouched body. Oh yeah, yeah. No, there is a couple more things I want to show you just quick here. Just remembering this. So I put this in by dragging the back of the hobby knife down. So that's how the fender would mount onto the car. The fender is one big piece. It doesn't uh, smooth out underneath here. So you got to put that line in. 
And then on the top, the fender comes straight up here and then it's all smooth in this zone right here. It's actually supposed to be a line that comes straight out because your vent here is a separate panel that drops in and the fenders come in here. Fenders would be curved underneath the windshield right there, come down here and drop straight down here and they'd be bolted in. Usually they're connected up across the top here with bolts and then something into the, maybe not in the door because the door swings in there, but definitely down in here by the rocker panel, and then a couple of braces. If it's anything like my Oldsmobile, <laughs> that's how it is. Ford actually has a really good anchoring system. I've had to take apart a actual Lincoln LTD, and I'll tell you, man, that is a trip and a half trying to get that off a 68 LTD. Uh, oh yes. Okay, so. This is the one last thing I'll show everybody. This car is actually a Ford Torino. It is not a Cobra. AMT did mold the little Cobra emblem on here and one in the back up here, but you need to get rid of those. Sand them all right off. Uh, get rid of your seam line. It comes up here, goes up there, you know, comes down here. You can feel it. That all has to be cleaned up. These little bars here are supposed to be on the real car. Now, this is the Ford Fairlane grill. Oh, wow. Hey, hold on a second. Hang on a minute. More tomfoolery from AMT. There is a lot going on. I actually have two completely different kits in just those two years. Look at this. Okay, I'm wrong. From before, this is the Cobra back end because down here it's smooth. So you would paint this your body color right in there. This is the Torino back end because it has that waffle shaped, if you want to call this a grill, molded right in there. So I really have two different chrome parts trees. And yet you would not know it because they're the same tree with the exception of they mucked around with the rear panel. And here is the Torino panel. So on one of them, dang, if I hadn't known that, I could have built two. Okay, so now i got to make a choice. Which one's going to be the Torino and which one is going to be the uh, NASCAR version? Probably should do that. Yeah, but I, well, uh, I sanded off my Cobras off of this to make it slick for NASCAR. And this one still has the Cobras. So really, this model kit should say, grab the box. Zoom back. Turn that. <laughs> should say 1969 Ford Torino slash Cobra because you could build this thing well provided you got enough of these messed around with parts trees you could either build it as the Torino or the Cobra <laughs> so I learned something new and now you guys have learned it too so uh, basically what else can we talk about? That's it. You've got two different kits. You've got two different chassis. The one with the pins that are forward moves the chassis into the proper position. The one that has them in the wrong spot, you got to cut the pins off and carefully move that chassis back. Glue your interior into the body before you put the chassis in and slide it around because the glue will hold everything in place for you. And you shouldn't really have any problems. So, to later on prove that you won't have any problems with everything I just said in those three videos. I'm going to build these cars, not today though, <laughs> but coming up I will build those two cars and I will fuss those problems and actually see if they are a problem, if they aren't a problem, or what the problem is in general. So anyway, thanks for watching this, uh, this 29 
a minute video and I hope it helped you out and I hope it clarifies a bunch of these weird you know issues that you may face with this kit so again thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one possibly a build possibly I, I was working on a video where I was doing stuff with painting and I just have two models that are like four parts away from being done but I need to paint the bodies and it's colors that one of the colors I have but it's in a spray can but I'm painting with a paintbrush so I've got to diffuse that out and I haven't used that one and the reason why I need to diffuse it out is because there's junk inside the paint can and every time I spray it goes with all this crap <laughs> so I've got to filter that and I don't even know if I can diffuse it I might have to <laughs> punch a nail through the side of the yeah I know through the side of the spray bottle and let all that stuff diffuse before I turn the can over and pour it all into a bottle yeah there's a lot of stress involved <laughs> so anyway We'll see how it all goes. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again.